Man, art's been so hard lately. I have yet to finish a full piece, and I spend hours working on it to only suddenly lose motivation. So many hours wasted. Hold it right there. Huh? Who said that? Bob Ross? It never gets old. That's one thing that's so fantastic about painting. <laughs> You're so right, Mr. Bob Ross, sir. Spoken like a true master. It's me! Thanks to the kind words from Mr. Ross, I want to challenge myself once again. Today I will be trying to follow one of Bob Ross's Joy of Painting videos in realistic spray paint. We're going to channel the inner love and joy of painting to make something truly breathtaking and marvelous. Alright, no more dilly-dallying. Let's pick up our digital paintbrushes and get started. So I tell you what, let's have them graphically run all the colors across the screen that you need to do this painting with me. Now, this is an 18 by 24 canvas. This is a double prime pre-stretched canvas. So we have that ready. So let's get together and let's do a fantastic painting. Let's put in a happy little cloud, little sky. Okay, hi voiceover me. I wanted to make sure I just had a really good foundation. So I started with painting the base sky color. I tried going for an initial gradient technique with using transparent brush strokes, but as I later realized, it just didn't look pretty. So then I just went for the opaque sky first and then layered transparency on top. Because as much as I wanted to try to blend out the sky, I quickly learned that it was not going to happen. Transparency on these drawing games are a little finicky and a little harder to control, especially if you're trying to work transparent colors on top of each other. It just does not work out in your favor. So this first section is just me trying to get everything to lay out smoothly. I was mostly trying to work on the white area in between the sky and water, just so there was somewhere I could blend the mountain into later on. For the water, I did a mix of transparent brush strokes, and for detail work, I just started using smaller opaque strokes with in-between transition tones. If you don't look too close at it, it doesn't look too bad. I am kind of sad this got painted over later on, because I did spend a lot of time trying to get it to blend out evenly, and then later on it's like not even barely visible from the sides, which is where I was blending the most. So let's do a fantastic little mountain down with this. I want to talk a little bit about why I chose this game specifically and not the other kinds of Roblox art games I've played. I love Roblox art games. They're some of my favorite ones to play. I could- I, I lose track of time playing them. I found this game a few weeks ago while I was playing with my friends. Really enjoyed the smooth brush strokes. It's also extremely smooth to run, which is great. What really sold me was the ability to save the work because I am not spending several hours on a piece again only for it to be deleted and only immortalized in a screenshot. This also allowed me to work on this painting over a few sessions, you know, make sure to take care of my wrists, which all artists should be doing. I'm looking at you there, you're not slick. I want to go over a bit of the layout process as I worked on this. Of course, I was following the video as closely as I could, following each step Bob Ross took. This program, I believe, allows you to have 30 layers, which is awesome. And I was trying to alternate between opaque and transparent layers. As I was doing my test drawings before I started this big piece, I realized no matter what layer your paint is on, if that paint is not 100% opaque, it will not overlap on top of other transparent paint. So I quickly learned if I wanted to achieve some sort of blending, I would have to layer my opaque and transparent layers in between each other. I was also working on a limited color palette. I found the hex codes of the types of colors Bob Ross showcased in his video, but since it's a digital program and I can't blend colors as a traditional medium, I had to eyeball a lot of transition tones. 
The colors also don't look 100% accurate because of the, it's likely a digital medium, the digital colors and traditional colors are going to look different. As soon as I hit my layer limit, I had to go back and readjust my layers, deleting areas where I painted over to make room for layers on top. This is obviously something you can't do in oil painting, but luckily I have the liberty to do so. Mountain check. It doesn't look realistic one bit, but I think the um, color changes in the hatching, it, it looks pretty good. What's happening? What do you mean? Um, okay. I'm gonna go paint happy little trees now. Looks like just the tops of thousands of little trees far off in the distance. But looking at this right now, it just looks really pretty. This is like eye candy. I think my biggest challenge was the trees. Trees are very texture reliant and only working with a hard round brush where you couldn't get a lot of organic shapes. You had to really make your own. I do sort of feel a lot of the trees I ended up with sort of just look like <laughs> colorful blobs. So I tried a different technique on some of them where I would layer different colors on the same layer. That way the colors would start Z fighting and it kind of sh made it look more like leaves. Not really, but it was better than nothing. I do really want to improve my blending in these programs. I would probably have to work with a fixed color palette to make it look smooth, but I'll, I'll master it one day. And another happy little bush. I'll sign this and we'll call it finished. My wrist is in pain after finishing all this. It, it took a lot longer than, you know, the initial tutorial, but I'd say that was a success. Would I do it again? Oh! I do hope watching me work on this start to finish was a fun bit of your day. I do want to do more artsy challenges and content in the future, so if you enjoyed this, like and subscribe.